Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello dear learners, I am Dr. Himani Singh working as an assistant professor with Institute of Business Management, GLA University, Mathura. I welcome you all to the session 10 of the course that is professional communication for managers and the session 10 is on interpersonal communication. So by the end of this session you all will be able to understand that what we mean by interpersonal communication and what role does interpersonal communication plays in our life. Not just this, we will also be discussing about the different communication styles which an individual tends to adapt when they go for interpersonal communication in the business setting as well as towards the end I will be talking about the different interpersonal tools, communication tools which you can use in order to make yourself as well as make your interpersonal communication the effective and impactful one and the tools are going to be transactional analysis and Johari window. So now let us start with the concept that what we mean by interpersonal communication. Yes, interpersonal communication is more about exchange of ideas, thoughts, feelings, emotions between two people for developing the mutual understanding. Yes, that is what is interpersonal communication is all about wherein you are transferring the ideas, the emotions from one person to the other person in order to develop the understanding. Now when I say interpersonal communication, yes, when only two people are involved in the communication that means the speaker and just one receiver only two people are involved in the communication process we call it as dyadic communication and in general we call it as interpersonal communication. So when we talk about interpersonal communication it is more about sharing the informational content with the people around you. Now it can be one or it can be many people around you, right. Apart from this when we talk about interpersonal communication it also expresses an individual's feelings. So it is not only about sharing the information it is also about bringing the feelings, the emotions of the person and that you tend to communicate to the other person. Now you might have heard that there are people who tend to communicate the things, the information, the idea not only by their words but also by their expressions, by their gestures. So that completely we talk about communication that is interpersonal communication wherein you share the information as well as you are transferring your feelings, your emotions to the other person. Also when we talk about interpersonal communication, it is about understanding the person's concept and feelings about yourself as well as about the other person. It is both things when we talk about interpersonal communication. Also. When we talk in context of interpersonal communication, it is actually the response to the context, not only to the information, we give response to the context of the information in which that conversation is taking place. Now if I talk about interpersonal communication, its significance basically. So, when I say interpersonal communication, it is pervasive in nature. Yes, pervasiveness is what makes interpersonal communication more important. 
irrespective of the fact that you tend to be placed in the top management cadre of your organization or middle level management group or lower level management group. Irrespective of this order or status, you need to communicate with the people around you. And yes, we do have successful managers in the organization and it is seen that those successful managers possess good interpersonal communication skills wherein they are able to deliver the information as well as they are able to convey that information with full feelings, with emotions and at the same time they know how to interpret other person's emotions, how to manage other person's feelings also. So it is not only about understanding yourself, it is also about the other people. Also, when we talk about interpersonal communication, as I said, that this is a skill which is required at every level of management. So, with every level of management, you require this skill at every moment in your organization. Might be you are in a situation wherein you are interacting with your client, you need to have interpersonal communication skills or you are interacting with your employee with your junior, with your senior, with your colleague, then also you need to have interpersonal communication and trust me, this transactions with the other people around you, they are very frequent. So frequency is quite high and the frequency is high that makes it even more important. As a budding manager, you need to possess this skill. Also, when we say interpersonal communication, it helps in providing us support, mental support, physical support. Moreover, we are more concerned here with the mental support with us. Not just this, in fact, if you have good interpersonal communication skills, you tend to provide support to the other people as well as you are able to take support from them also. Not just this, when we talk about interpersonal communication, Right, it helps in fulfilling the compatibility needs in different contexts. I'll tell you how in different contexts. If I talk about inclusion, inclusion is that we want to be associated with some group, with some one. It can be a group, it can be a person. Right, so in an organization when you are going to join, you want to be affiliated with some group, with some people with some individuals so that you can also satisfy your compatibility needs. Also, you are going to be in a situation wherein you want to control people, wherein you want to exercise authority over other people, whether you want to exercise power over other people, right? So, in that case also, if you are looking for that, you need to have good interpersonal communication skills. Not just this, in fact, if you want to gain attention from other people, right? So in that case also, yes, that might be somewhere linked with your personal relationships, personal attention, but that for that also, you need to have good interpersonal communication skills. So yes, as a manager, you really need to possess these skills if you want to excel in your organization. Now moving forward, I am going to focus upon the different forms of interpersonal communication which you as an individual tend to take upon in different contexts. See in an organization, when you are going to work, you will be in different contexts like uh, somewhere you will be into the superior subordinate relationship with some people you are going to share a colleague or peers kind of context. Apart from this, in certain situations, you might be some executive in terms of job seeker or you are the media personnel. So like this, these are the different contexts. Now I'll tell you that in these different contexts, which forms of communication style or interpersonal communication you used to take up. Now if I talk about superior subordinate relationship, right? Uh, as if you are the superior and you are into uh, giving some kind of orders 
to your junior to your subordinate or you might be counseling that person for one or the other reason you might be coaching providing mentoring to that person you might be informing you might be persuading or you might be into the disciplining form apart from this if i talk about that you are into a role wherein the context is you are interacting with your colleagues with your peers so in that case you will be either into the discussion mode or into the collaboration mode or into the coordination mode the third context can be that you are into the job seeking mode or you are a media personnel there in the forms of communication it can be either in the interview form or either in the evaluation form see what as an interviewee enter the interviewer's room if you are the interviewer what you are doing you are evaluating if you are the interviewee what is being done you are being evaluated by the person so like this these are the different context and based on these context there are different forms of interpersonal communication now moving further i will be talking about the interpersonal communication distortions yes barriers that when we talk about interpersonal communication one person communicating to the other one right there are certain barriers there are certain distortions and what are those yes they are quite similar to the communication barriers which we discussed in the previous session it's just a quick revision on to that the very first one is mental block now if you have closed your mind you have put a block in your mind see i don't want to communicate with this person due to x y z reason right in that case of course interpersonal communication is going to be closed you are not open to the interpersonal communication so for that what you need to do is you need to remove that block you need to build trust between you and the other side apart from that many a times there is a barrier or a distortion in the coding efficiency coding efficiency is that i wanted to communicate to you but somehow i am not able to encode the message as per your priority as per your choice or take the other way around might be i am receiving a message from your end but as a receiver i am not able to decode the message so what's that that is coding inefficiency now it can be due to some kind of language problem or again some kind of psychological problems as well socio psychological problems but if you want to remove this distortion you need to cater to these problems moving further it can be transmitter problem now transmitter problem is the medium problem in that case if you are facing the medium problem the channel is the problem due to which interpersonal communication is being closed then you need to look for that how that particular medium can be rectified or in order to go on for successful interpersonal communication which is the right medium to go for so that is how you can move upon also not just this in fact in interpersonal communication distortion occurs due to feedback failures why i am saying feedback failures remember that sender he is going to send some message and then it will be reaching to the receiver but the receiver is not giving feedback and when the receiver is not giving any feedback back to the sender communication is not two way communication is not proper and if it is not proper of course the interpersonal communication is closed also many a times we are not able to go for effective interpersonal communication due to lot of noise physical noise mechanical noise around us so if you are able to look for such kind of noise yes you will be able to communicate effectively also another important aspect which stood as a barrier between this particular interpersonal communication or which distorts the interpersonal communication and in fact trust me it's again one of the most important barrier that's the poor relationship between the speaker and the listener yes the moment you are not having 
good relationships, you are not sharing good reputation that is going to harm your or degrade or deteriorate your interpersonal communication skills. So, these are some of the barriers which you as a manager should try to find out so that they can be removed and you can go on for effective interpersonal communication. Moving forward, I will be talking about the different communication styles. Yes, communication styles based on the business settings. We do have different terminologies for the same either as a manager, you are going to go for controlling style or egalitarian style or structuring, dynamic, relinquishing, withdrawal. I will be explaining all these styles one by one in detail. If I talk about the very first style which you might take upon is the controlling style. But yes, when we talk about controlling style, it is majorly taken up by such people who are a bit autocratic in nature or who wants to control other person's life or who wants to give orders, who always wants to feel authoritative and believe that yes, they are into some position and they can control other person's life. Such people are going to go for controlling type of interpersonal communication style. Yes, if I talk about some benefits, it is beneficial when you are dealing with theory X kind of people. Remember what is theory X? When an employer believes that his or her employee does not want to work, they do not have, they do not want to take self responsibility. So, in such cases, in fact, controlling style as, a, as an interpersonal communication style is the effective one because your people do not want to work and you want them to work. So, in that case, you should go on for some kind of ordering style, fine. So, in that case, yes, there is one negative aspect that it is only one way communication, but inside the business also you will realize that there are certain situations wherein you need to go gain compliance and for the same you cannot avoid using controlling style. Although controlling style is not a motivating style which motivates the people around you. But yes, there are situations, time bound situations in which you may adopt going with the controlling style as your interpersonal communication style. Second in line is egalitarian style. Now, when I say egalitarian style, you will be finding that egalitarian style is taken up by the people who have keen interest in the mutual benefit of the speaker as well as the listener. They believe that the, yes, the other people also want to work and yes, you should promote them. And how you are going to promote them? You will be promoting them by taking up or bringing into the decision making. So, egalitarian style is taken up by the people who are somewhat you will be finding democratic transformational kind of leaders who wants to provide support to their people. They will involve them in decision making. But it has certain negative aspects. Negative in terms of what happens is that whenever you take up a role who tends to be democratic, transformational leader or a supportive kind of leader, many a time such people tend to take up paternalistic approach, paternalistic. Now, when I say paternalistic approach that normally believes that you will be taking up a fatherly attitude, fatherly attitude and when I say fatherly attitude, so in such manner the way you communicate, you communicate in such a manner wherein you believe that whatever you are saying is correct. 
you do listen you do listen to your people or to uh, the other person so two way communication is there but at the end of the day you believe that whatever you have decided is actually the most appropriate one so sometimes it becomes somewhat negative as well when you take up into the paternalistic approach moving forward we do have the structuring style now see when we talk about structuring style yes it is in fact one of the best one when you need to have some some kind of information in the most structured way some kind of routine mechanistic work is being done right so in such situations it's really good you should take up going for structuring kind of interpersonal communication style wherein you see that yes you need to supervise the task and the task needs to be supervised in the predetermined fashion you need not to come up with any creative ways of doing that work it is just a kind of routine work periodic work it keeps on going and that's the way only it keeps on going need not to need not to add any kind of uh, something creativity to that work right so it is a structured work it keeps on moving so in such situations it is always good to go up with the structured way one more thing when you want some kind of more detailed work specificity needs to be there in that case you should go on for structuring style apart from structuring style we do have dynamic style yes dynamic style uh, talks about more of the high energy high enthusiastic kind of approach energetic approach right and you will be finding that it is taken in the situations wherein you don't have much of the time to share the information right some time constraint is there uh, and at the same time you want to just share some short information some short message with your people in that case rather than going for the detailed one the structuring one you just want to share some piece of information out of the bunch and that's how you are going on for the dynamic style see dynamic style is good because you are talking about time constraint situations you are talking about short information to be shared but make sure that when you are using dynamic style you are sharing the information the short pieces of the information with those people only who have the background knowledge if you are going to use this style this communication style when the receiver uh, does not know the backdrop does not know the background of that information then in that case dynamic style is not good right so if you believe that the receiver is comfortable with the information with the whole information and you have time constraint you cannot go on for explaining whole things again so you are just focusing on some short message and you want to focus on some short message in that case you can go on for the dynamic style it's the best one moving forward is relinquishing style now when i say relinquishing style uh, in this you will be fine if you are taking up this style you will be leaving everything on your subordinate because you trust them i'll tell you how relinquishing style is different from the egalitarian one remember the second one which i discussed egalitarian relinquishing versus egalitarian in that also i talked about democratic transformational leaders taking up supporting people involving them in the participation but here what i'm trying to say is that they'll leave everything to the subordinate you will be asking your subordinate yes i trust you i trust your capabilities your competencies you go and decide you go and make decisions right of course you are going to be there it's not that you are going to leave your employees no it simply means that you are leaving the responsibility to be taken care leaving the decision making on your people but at the back you are always there 
But in the egalitarian style what was happening somewhere or the other you were taking up the paternalistic approach wherein you will getting into that particular thing wherein you believe that yes whatever you are saying is actually correct and yes that is how you move on. But here you have left everything on your subordinates and you are standing as a backbone to them. You are standing as a support to them that you are acting as an as a facilitator to them. So, whenever they are stuck in some problem they can always look back to you. It favors upward communication in the most right manner, right? In the most appropriate manner. The subordinates they feel free to discuss any of their problems with their leaders. So, that is what is relinquishing style wherein you favor, you inculcate, you nurture two way communication. The last style is withdrawal style, although uh, th this style is somewhat a negative style which you should not take up because in this it is believed that people who take up withdrawal style, they have left every hope, they are now not interested into the communication. They have left everything to their subordinate and now they do not want to get into any kind of communication with them. The subordinates to take full responsibility that means you have given everything on them and yes communication breakdown that is why I said it is a communication failure wherein you stop communicating. You do not focus on the communication aspect so this is style, this is the style which is actually not good. So, these were some of the styles which you might be taking up when you are going to go for interpersonal communication. Now, after the styles I am going to focus upon the different interpersonal communication tools and for the same I am going to talk about two different tools that is transactional analysis and Johari window. I will start with the transactional analysis. Transactional analysis was proposed by Eric Byrne and yes it is more about that when people transact or exchange the ideas, emotions, information they are either comfortable in doing that or they are not comfortable. It is not that that whenever a transaction happens everyone is comfortable. Before that you need to understand that what we mean by transaction. When I am conveying something to you that is what is a transaction exchange right. The, a transaction is taking place between you and me when I am telling you something when I am conveying some information to you. So, that is what is transaction. Now that particular transaction a person can be comfortable or a person can be uncomfortable. That again depends on his personality temperament on different factors which I am going to discuss in this session. So, analysis of transactions between two or more is about transactional analysis and yes transactional analysis is a technique is a tool which tends to help us to understand the behavior of other person so that you are able to make communication more effective. Now, what is the problem is that when transactions happen we do not focus, we do not understand the other person. So, if you are going to understand then for sure you will be moving towards more effective, more impactful communication. So, now if I talk about transactional analysis in detail, yes I will be focusing on four different aspects of transactional analysis. The very first one is ego states wherein I will be talking about the child ego, the adult ego state, the parent ego state. Not just this, I will be focusing on the transactions and in transactions I will be talking about complementary transactions, crossed transactions and ulterior transactions. In the stroking I will be talking about negative strokes and the positive stroking and in life positions I am going to talk about four different life positions. So, now let us begin with the 
ego states, the very first aspect of transactional analysis. Now what we mean by ego state? Ego state is inner state of feelings and experiences and emotions. It is an individual's inner state of feelings. Now when we talk about ego state, a person can have three different ego states. Either child ego state or adult or parent. Now if I am going to discriminate in these three different ego states, first I will start with the description aspect. How you tend to describe that what we mean by child ego state or adult or parent. Now when an individual while communicating his thoughts or exchanging his or her thoughts with the other person, if he or she is behaving as a child, then we call it as child ego state. Whereas during the communication, during interpersonal communication, if a person behaves quite objectively, quite in a rationalized manner, while gathering facts, analyzing them and then only he is coming up with some information that we talk about the adult ego state. And the third one is more about parent ego state wherein you start behaving as a parent. Now if I talk about the oral clues which you can get that how you are going to identify that this person is communicating in his or her parent ego state or child or adult. You will be taking certain clues. I will tell you how. Uh, if a person is starting his uh, phrases or his communication by quoting, I want this in any case. I wish to go there. So what is this? This is a kind of child ego state wherein the person is not caring about anything, he, might, he or she might sound you irrational and that is how you need to move upon. Now next in line is the adult ego state. Adult ego state you will be finding that the person is trying to gather facts. He or she is trying to ask you queries that what, where, when this thing happened, how this thing happened and so on. Right? So this is how you can go on for identifying that what kind of ego state that person is into when he or she is communicating. Now if it is a parent ego state, uh, it might be that I care, I should or I want in terms of you should never do this, always you should do this. So what is that? That is a kind of guiding a parent ego state which we are able to get. Right? So uh, if I say that uh, child ego state, you will be finding people bit rebellious, bit irrational, uh, who simply talks about their own things. They can be more manipulative. Yes, they can be creative as well. And a person who is into the parent ego state, they are more cool headed, rational, calculative people. Whereas if I talk about the parent ego state, they are more of nurturing protective, loving, caring kind of personalities, right? I will show you with the example that how different ego states vary and how your transactions, how your reactions are going to be. For example, if your manager asked, today we have to submit the report, can we? So as a subordinate, you might be having three different ego states, that is child, adult and parent. If you are from the child ego state, how you are going to answer? You might be saying, you know better, I do not have any idea like this. You know better, I do not have any idea. What is that? that is a child ego state wherein you are not able to understand that what kind of question was being asked and you are being rebellious in your own manner. Whereas if it is going to be adult ego state, in that case if a, your manager asks you today we have to submit the report, can we? So you might say yes we can. Let me 
finish the findings. So, what you did very objectively in a very rationalized manner, you said you replied that yes, we can do this, but at the same time, I need to compile my findings. So, let me finish that completely objective, completely rationalized with a rational uh, rationality behind this that why you will be taking 2 minutes or 5 minutes upon that. Now, talking about the parent ego state. If you as a manager, you are asking today we have to submit the report can be if your subordinate is into the parent ego state, what is going to be his reply? We should Even if we cannot, we should finish the work. Right? So, what is that? That is a parent ego state, wherein you are trying to tell that yes, we should do this because ideally, this is only the way. If some report is being done, I, we should complete it. So, see these are the different ego states which you will be coming across, right? And it is again you need to understand that which ego state you are clashing with, you are coming up with. So, that was about the ego state in the transactional analysis. Next in line, I will be talking about the transactions. Transactions are the exchanges, what is happening between you and me as an information is being exchanged. So, we do have three types of transactions that is complementary transaction, cross transaction and ulterior transaction. When I say complementary transaction, complementary transaction means expected response from the other person's ego state that whatever I am expecting the kind of response I am expecting I am getting that response only fine. It is not that some clash is being there nothing like that. There is no clash, there is no crossed communication, it is just complementary whatever I expected, I am getting it back. I asked you how are you and you said I am fine, I am doing good. So, what is that? That is a complementary transaction, wherein I was expecting the similar kind of reaction only, fine. Cross transaction incompatible unexpected ego state on the part of the other person. You expected something else, but you are getting a reply from some other ego state of that person. Yes, it is the source of interpersonal conflict. I asked you how are you and you are asking, you are telling me why should I tell you? What is that? That is a cross transaction wherein the other person told you that see I am not interested in talking to you, what why are you bothered right. So, this is what is a failure of communication that is interpersonal communication cross transaction. The third category is ulterior transaction, yes that is also somewhere the source of interpersonal conflict, but uh, it is somewhat different from the crossed one. When I say ulterior, it always involves two ego states on the part of a person. That means, whatever an individual is saying, he means something else. For example, if I am telling someone that, okay, if you are not able to complete this work, come to me with this kind of ego state. What does this mean? Better not come to me. Actually, I meant that but what I am saying something else. Again the similar example, if I am asking you how are you doing, you are simply saying I like drinking a tea. That is again a kind of ulterior transaction that I am asking you something else and again you wanted to say something else and you are saying it something else. So, that is what is ulterior transaction. So, these are the three different transactions complementary, crossed and ulterior. Yes, complementary transactions, they are the transactions which makes interpersonal communication more effective, whereas crossed and ulterior transactions, they should be avoided. 
because they are not the right way of going for interpersonal communication. Now, I am going to talk about the third aspect of transactional analysis that is stroking. So, what stroking? Stroking is any implying recognition of another's presence. Now, it can be positive strokes, it can be negative strokes. Now, stroking can be done verbally or non-verbally. I will tell you how. If I say positive stroking, I am doing positive stroking to other people. Just saying hello to a person in the room is passing positive strokes from my end to the other person. Just giving a small smile to an individual or to my subordinate, it is giving him a positive stroke. Whereas negative stroke, as a top management personnel, I am entering the room and I am not looking and waving my hand to say hi to some of the juniors. It might end up into the negative strokes. So, when I say positive stroking, just a non-verbal or the verbal clue, that is a small smile can make people emotionally healthy. Whereas, negative stroking collect bad feelings. It is going to give negative impression. As I said, that as a top management personnel, you enter the room, you noticed 10 people, but you did not look at 2 people. There were 2 more people in the room, but you did not pass a smile to them. So, that is a negative stroke which you are doing with these two people. So, what is happening now these two they are going to collect these bad feelings and slowly and steadily it is going to impact the interpersonal communication. Might be possible that from your end it happened accidentally, but that is a negative stroke right. So, that is what is the stroking all about. The fourth aspect of transactional analysis is life positions. I will be talking about different life positions which are being adopted by individuals that is ok or that they are not ok. I will just draw a small matrix. This is about the life positions. First quadrant talks about I am ok, you are ok, I am not ok, you are ok. The next quadrant talks about I am ok, you are not ok. The last quadrant is about I am not ok, you are also not ok. The first quadrant which I am going to explain is I am ok, you are ok, right. So, I am finding things, I believe that my communication style is good and so I believe that your communication style is also good. I believe I am smart, I am clever, I believe so you are, you are also smart, you are also clever, right. So, this is actually the most idealistic way of interpersonal communication, fine. The most idealistic way of interpersonal communication wherein a good communication, effective interpersonal communication is taking place between you and the other person because you have good feelings about yourself as well as about the other person. Now, this is the second quadrant wherein there are two things that is I am ok, but you are not ok. I am clever, I am smart, but you are stupid, you are not ok, you are not good enough. In such kind of situation, people tem tend to be victimized or pressurized, victimized or pressurized and they believe, they believe that 
if something wrong is happening to them it is happening because of others which is not correct which might not be the right thing which might not be the truth so this is what is the second quadrant the third quadrant is about i am not okay you are okay i am stupid i am dishonest you are clever you are smart now in such situation the people if you are into this life position you tend to have poor interpersonal communication because you are not able to communicate because you believe that you are inferior to everyone around you you are not an, uh, right enough you cannot communicate you cannot talk you cannot express you are completely surrounded by all the ill feelings about you and yes in extreme cases when you are too much into this situation people tend to commit suicide as well the last and the fourth quadrant is about which is again the worst in the interpersonal communication which believes that i am not okay you are also not okay i am bad i am not smart you are also not smart you are also bad so this is again a quadrant wherein i have left all the interest for going for interpersonal communication i don't want to communicate to anyone around me i have lost interest in all the situations all the kind of life positions all the kind of transactions which are taking place around me right so that is again not the idealistic one even third second fourth all these three are not the idealistic one you need to look for but again two and three you still can improve and can reach to the first part or the first quadrant so this was about the transactional analysis wherein you need to analyze that what kind of transactions you are going for or you are getting what kind of ego state you are into and what kind of ego state you are getting from the other people the moment that ego state is going to match you are going to have good transactions effective interpersonal communication also make sure that you are going up with the positive stroking because positive stroking again inculcates nurture healthy environment so if i talk about the importance that why you as a manager should be aware of interpersonal uh, of uh, transactional analysis because it enhances interpersonal skills because it will tell you that in which ego state you are and how you can move on to the other ego state because now you know the distinction now you know that yes all these three ego states lies within you only it is just a matter of fact that which ego state is communicating at a point of time and yes you can switch your ego states as per your convenience also why not if you are aware of it you need to be aware of all those ego states also that's a source of positive energy motivation as well as ultimately it's going to develop the organization as a whole so now i am moving on to the next interpersonal communication tool that's johari window when i say johari window it is a technique which is going to help you to understand people their relationships with themselves and as well as with the other people so that is what is the beauty of johari window it was being uh, proposed by joseph luft and harrington ingham in around 1955 and yes it is primarily used by the self help groups as well as the corporate settings as a heuristic exercise as a necessary exercise because that necessary exercise is really required in order to understand yourself as well as in order to understand the people around you the moment you are going to understand these relationships for sure you can become a person with brilliant interpersonal communication skills So now I am going to tell you that what we mean by the Johari window. See, we do have two dimensions. One dimension talks about known to self, not known to self. That means 
I know about myself, there are certain things, there are certain things which I do not know about myself. The other dimension is about known to others, there are certain things which are known to others, which know, which others know about me and there are certain things which are unknown to others also. Now, based on these two dimensions, a matrix is being formed and in the first quadrant lies the open area or the arena. Now, what is the open area? The open area or the arena is that there are certain facts, there are certain personality traits which are known to me about myself. I know that yes, as a human being, as an individual, I possess these traits. At the same time, the other people are also taking me in the same manner. There is no gap in communication, right? Second thing is about the blind spot. Now, the blind spot is basically which is not known to you, not known to you. You do not know about yourself, but you are doing that thing and which is clearly visible, which is clearly known to the other people, right? So, that is known as the blind spot. That is the second quadrant. The third quadrant is about the hidden area or the facade, which is not known to others, which other people do not know about me, but at the same time, I know that particular fact. I know that thing that I am doing this. So, that is known as the hidden area or the facade. The fourth quadrant is the unknown. Now, when I say unknown, it is neither known to me nor to the other people. That was just the Johari window. Now, I will tell you that how you can make use of this window. You know the open area, the arena, that is completely fine, that is quite realistic, right? That whatever you are, it is being comprehended in the similar manner. So, interpersonal communication is at its best when you are into this particular thing, when while communicating, this is happening. But the problem arises with the blind spot. So, what you can do is to reduce the size of the blind spot, you should in fact take feedback, take feedback. If you are going to take feedback from the people around you, you will be able to reduce that blind spot and the moment you are able to reduce that blind spot, you will be able to make yourself more into the open area. I will just draw here again to make you memorize. This is open area, this is blind spot, this is hidden area, this is unknown. Now, our point is to increase the size of this window, this particular pane, right? So, if you are going to take feedback from the people, because people know about you, so you can reduce this blind spot or else you can go on for reducing this unknown area also. How you will be doing it? If you are going to move out of your comfort zone, try new things which you were not doing earlier, try new ways of interpersonal communication, right? In that manner, you can reduce this unknown area also. You will be knowing more about yourself. So, go out of your comfort zone. The moment you are, you will be doing that. Disclosure, disclosure is for the hidden strategy. Disclosure. You are going to use disclosure, right? And by that disclosure, just tell people that why you behaved in that manner. What was the reason of your ego state at that time? Why you did this? What you will be doing? You will be able to increase that open arena. So, this is how you can make use. You can make use of feedback or going out of your comfort zone or going for the disclosure strategy in order to enhance interpersonal communication. So, just in the end, I am going to talk about the need for Jahari window that why you need us, of course, for your self assessment so that you can go on for reducing your unknown area as well, right? 
for maintaining enhancing cordial relationships you should go on for reducing the hidden area also improves communication the more open area is going to be with you then you are going to have improved interpersonal communication and not just this you will be able to develop team develop yourself as an individual as well as you will be able to make sure that the group is moving the group dynamics the cohesiveness in the groups should be increased so these are some of the benefits some of the importance of johari window that why you should use this as your interpersonal communication tool so dear learners i hope you are able to understand the basic concept of interpersonal communication as well as you are able to understand the different styles communication styles based on business settings also you are able to understand the different tools of interpersonal communication and you are going to use these tools in order to enhance your interpersonal communication skill as well as the interpersonal communication skill of the people around you at your workplace so dear learners thank you and happy learning Thank you.